there, yeah, in the red jacket. Um, I'd like to thank Anne Coulter for giving a better comedy set here than she did at the roast of Rob Lowe, firstly. Um, but... I was great. Sure. Um, <clears throat> <laughs> um, but, so, I'm really interested that you are so willing to defend, um, uh, like, Anglo-Saxon values of, like, women and the elderly when you have a president who literally said that he was going to grab women by the pussy. You had an incredibly high-profile rape case of Brock Turner where he got off because it would impact his schooling. Do you not think that- Wait, I what are you talking about? What's the second one? Brock Turner. Oh, okay, you finally the got Stanford, one. The Stanford Stanford. <laughs> right. Um, do you not think that when you characterize such crimes as only coming from immigrant communities, and only coming from refugees, and this sort of notion of incompatibility with these values, all you're actually doing is ostracizing these people and creating the discontent towards the West that you say is endemic to these countries, but is actually probably something that you are inflaming. Um, first of all, you're... You know, we only have an hour. I will assume any question denouncing me has met with wide approval and we can cut down on the applause. Um, <laughs> Point one, he'd, um, this is a lie that the media keeps, keeps spreading that Trump said he commits that he grabs women's um, P words. Um, he was talking about celebrity culture. He said, when you are a celebrity, they let you do it. They could win that case in summary judgment in court. They let you do it. Um, um, so to be, I mean, making a comment, it's quite clearly true. A lot of, some portion of women um, are willing to do a lot of things for money, to be with a celebrity, to get on Fox News. Um, the Brock... Like, like, you are defending your own, you're defending these feminist values of, like, American people getting up there and being like, we're going to get up there and be like, yeah, you know, loads of women will do this ourselves. No, I think I got the question. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not, I'm not that offended. Okay, he was coarse, but he didn't say he does this. He happens to be, I mean, he is kind of a, he's the kind of person who brags about things he didn't do. Um, that's a different kind of idiot. Um, and I think that is, that's what we're talking about. And I don't think the feminists are particularly offended that he used the, the P word. Otherwise, they wouldn't be marching around with, with those hats. Whoa, you must be really offended. Um, I wouldn't behave in such a coarse way. Um, I think the most shocking thing about that tape, really didn't get any attention, um, was that he claimed he was hitting on a married woman. And the funniest part about it was the married woman's re reaction was, you were hitting on me? Furniture shopping is an aphrodisiac? You gotta get your game up. Um, I mean, that I thought was somewhat more offensive, except it was so innocuous, the woman didn't even know she was hitting on him. Um, okay, yeah, there was, there was one weird case, that Brock case that was covered like the 9-11 attack. Um, one drunk guy with a drunk wo woman. There were more cases of, of white men being falsely accused. Duke LaCrosse, UVA, Ferguson. Um, I mean, it, oh, mattress girl at Columbia, the girl who walks around with a mattress on her back, and then he finally releases the, the emails he sent to her. No, there are, there are, white men on college campuses are far more falsely accused than, than guilty. But what, what we're talking about is, is not the numbers. We're talking about bringing in people we don't already have living in our country. Okay. I'm all for locking up our own criminals. Again, I'd love to deport them. I'd love to send them to you if you love them so much. I'd love to, but we can't. They're already our citizens. Why would any country bring in criminals we don't already have? We're full on criminals. We got them. Um, and as for having other cultures hate us, fine. Go ahead, hate us. I want you to hate us in your own country. Uh, Raheem Kassam is the editor of Breitbart London. He joins me now from Washington. And many thanks indeed for joining us, uh, joining us uh, this evening. Um, what does it say about President Trump when he refers to countries like Haiti, El Salvador, and other um, countries in Africa as shithole countries? Well, I suppose we'll start with the fact that he's denying having used that, uh, that language. This is following a meeting in the Oval Office with some Democrats who had just been informed that they weren't getting an amnesty uh, deal for illegal immigrants. So I'm not entirely sure of 
how, uh, how reliable it is. Well, and he, how the White he's House denying the use of that it, language, but, but Democrat Dick yeah. Durbin has been a Democrat, has been in Congress for 20 years, said that President Trump did use that language. Are you saying that he's lying? No, no. I'm just trying to put it in context for you. I, personally, I hope he did use that language, uh, uh, Gamal. I think, uh, I think it shows a, a frankness, uh, a willingness to have a conversation that isn't um, sort of varnished with political correctness. Uh, he wants to know why uh, America has a big illegal immigration problem. Let's not forget the OECD puts out uh, uh, statistics every year, the United Nations, Transparency International, um, all the corruption indexes. They put out statistics every year that show that there are a handful of countries out there in the world uh, that are pr pretty bad. I mean, you know, I don't, I don't want to use the, the word on air, pretty but bad you can is describe very them as what describing described. country as, as being a well, shithole. You you, look, if you want me to say it, they are shitholes. You know, Gamal, it, 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 it's, 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 it is the case. There's no getting around it. And, and, and he's not saying that they are because, you know, they're bad people there or anything like that. It might be due to corrupt regimes. It might be due to uh, uh, factors out of the control, environmental factors. There might be education problems there. But there are countries that you and I wouldn't want to go uh, on holiday in and sun ourselves in. And I think that's what he's getting at. Uh, it shouldn't be, uh, it should be shocking to anybody that there are, there are horrible places in the world that are horrible for the people who live there to live. And instead of actually getting het up about the, the phrase used, maybe we've got to ask ourselves, why is Haiti in such a dire situation? Is, it, it, appropriate that billion... is it appropriate that the United States president should use a phrase uh, describing countries such as Haiti, El Salvador or countries in Africa as shitholes? You think it's appropriate for a president of a country, a leader of a country to use that term, to use that phrase? Yeah, well, let's look at uh, uh, Barack Obama, who gave a, an interview. Let's look at what Barack Obama said about swearing in the Oval Office. He said it's a great thing for presidents to be able to do to relieve stress. Uh, Joe Biden, when the Obamacare legislation was passed, described it on live microphone as a big effing deal. So, so I think the level of appropriateness has already been set by, by Trump's predecessors on this one. So my answer is, yeah, it's perfectly fine. You think it's fine that... I'm not talking about Barack Obama, I'm not talking about any other leaders. Of course you're not. We're talking about this president describing a country as a shithole country. You think that's fine? Yeah, I think that's fine. Okay, um, what about um, President Trump saying that he's not going to come to the United Kingdom um, and open this uh, embassy? What is your thoughts, your reflections on that? Well... Oh, have we lost him? Have we lost Raham? Oh, uh, what a crying shame. Um, well, we will uh, move on. We've just got a very brief statement, actually, regarding um, that story about President Trump uh, not coming to the United Kingdom to open that uh, embassy. Uh, Raham, are you back? Is he back? Right here. Smashing. Um, I'd just like to get your thoughts on the fact that President Trump has said that he's not going to be coming to the United Kingdom to open the U.S. embassy. Yes, well, I don't blame him. You know, you have a, you have a situation whereby uh, Sadiq Khan, as the mayor of London, has really been tub-thumping, trying to get President Trump not to attend, said multiple times he's not welcome in the capital, uh, really fomenting uh, a, a, a situation where you might have some, some riots or street protests uh, if, if the president came to open that embassy. Um, I don't, by the way, I, th I think the president's wrong uh, when he says that the embassy in South London is a bad deal. Uh, I think the, the, firstly, it wasn't Obama who, who approved that embassy. It was George W. Bush who approved that embassy. Secondly, it didn't cost the American taxpayer anything because they actually sold off a bunch of buildings to pay for it. So I think he is wrong on that. Uh, I think he should have come out and told the, the, the honest truth, which is that he doesn't particularly want to visit Sadiq Khan's London, which is the acid attack capital of the world per capita, where you have in the last year uh, uh, soaring knife crime, soaring burglary, soaring rape, soaring youth homicide. Uh, and, and Sadiq Khan seems to be concerning himself more with matters of state which he isn't elected to do, uh, than actually solving the situation of, of, of crime in London. And it is soaring. Um, and I, I have to say this, uh, and, and you'll excuse me for being churlish about it, but places like Sky News and the BBC and, and all the best, best and brightest journalists in the country are not covering this. What do you mean? Well, Every single day we are covering stories about whether it's knife crimes or attacks, where they happen up and down the country. What proof okay. do you have? So, 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 what proof so Gamal, what's the, uh, what's, uh, well, the proof is, can you answer me? What's the, uh, what, what, at what rate did knife no, this crime is, go up by I'm, in London I'm last year? I'm asking you, I'm interviewing you. What yeah, proof I know. do you have? Well, I know. It's, it's, not, it's not great with the shoes on the other foot. 
Do you know how much youth homicide went up by in London last year? Have you told your viewers that? 70%. Have you looked at the mayoral uh, police and crime report from December the 12th? You look at that, almost every single measure out of 42, only four of them in four categories did crime go down. In every single other area, double-digit rises in crime across London. So you know what? To borrow a phrase from, from Donald Trump, London's turning into a shithole under Sadiq Khan. Uh, OK, I think we'll uh, leave it there. Um, Rahim Kassim, sure the will. editor for Breitbart. Um, thanks for joining us this evening. Cheers.